So the section of the ridge route we're on right now was repaired after the 2005 landslides. The original reason why the road was closed was because of those landslides. You'll see it's a pretty nice, almost pink concrete. This was done kind of as a proposition to see if they did end up redoing the road and cleaning up the road, what it would look like. So this section is pretty smooth. It's really, really quite beautiful. What you'll find along this journey is a lot of the road has actually been redone and especially south of Reservoir Summit, kind of going towards Castaic. You'll find a lot of stuff that's been redone, not only by the Ridge Route Preservation Organization, but by Edison and uh, SoCal Gas. So let's take a look at our most recent landslide. This is just under a mile north of the Castaic Gate. It's, <laughs> it's been quite a menace. It started last year in the winter during the major rains we had, and it's just been slowly crumbling. These sandbags were originally put out here to stop water from coming, but they've now become makeshift cones since our cones keep getting tossed the ditch. Cool thing about some of this stuff is you can see different layers of the road. So we have 2018, we have 1920s, and then we have 1918. But you can see how menacing this landslide is and how much of the road it takes up. Um, further down over here, we have part of the road sticking out into that hillside. That's the original alignment of the road. A lot of it's been taken out. You can see the hillside down there is still crumbling a little bit. And we've been keeping track. There's newer spots here that are still starting to peel off. We came up and marked this up to track how much we're losing. And this piece right there over the edge is in the last probably three months. But you can see so much of the original concrete down there. And how much of it is flexing still. And then even evidence of a previous landslide where you can see right about there where the old section of road was. Now this kind of poses a major threat here because not only do we have this big gaping hole in the road, but you can see how far in based on these cracks, how far it's still flexing. So even out to here, you have these cracking in the road and this is, this is 2018 paving. So since that point in time, it's still flexing and cracking even as far over as this edge.
So this roadside stop here was a National Forest Inn. It was about right here. It was a white clapboard building. They had cabins and they had a garage. Now, they had a dining hall, which would, during Prohibition, turn into a dance hall. And while they didn't supply the alcohol, they wouldn't ask questions if you brought your own. There were a lot of wild parties that came up here. Also, are our monuments. Now these are in quite rough condition right now. We luckily have a scout who's looking at making these his Eagle Scout project. And he's putting together the proposition right now. We wish him the best of luck and we're here in total support of that. I love having young people involved in this road and kind of get to know the history. Sometimes on these monuments you'll find all kinds of little little relics from the roadside stops. If you see these, please leave them here. There's lots of little bits of plates, pretty big bolt, a hook of some sort, a caster. Now, what was the fate of the National Forest Inn, if you'd like to know? It ended up burning down in 1932, just one year before the Ridge Route was bypassed by the Ridge Route Alternate in 1933. So coming on to what would now be the property of the National Forest Inn right here. The main building sat just off this ledge here. And there were cabins up here, as well as back there. And right now we'd be standing inside of the garage. The little staircase there is really all that's left of the National Forest Inn. But you gotta admit, with this view, it must have been a pretty neat place to stay. Something else to note is right on top of this hill is one of the reservoirs that was used to um, provide water while they were paving the road. There was three of them along the road, one that's in Castaic that's buried, one on top of this hill by the National Forest Inn, and one at Reservoir Summit. And this right here used to be um, a maintenance garage for the road, right across the street from the National Forest Inn. do a little drone action here. I think the view right now is just insane. This is why I love coming up here. So the neat thing right now is this section we're looking at. I'm looking at it on the drone right now too. Um, that was redone as part of a deal with the oil pipeline. Uh, they had to do some work on their pipelines. 
and part of that involved tearing up bits of the road. Now, because they tore up bits of the road and it's a historic road, they had to fix it up and that's how this ended up getting fixed up. Also to know the spot we're standing right now, which you can see in the drone footage, overlooks the five. So it's really cool to see between this road and the five, the same person who built this road could have driven on the five. And I think that's insane. That's a whole lot of, you know, road innovation for one lifetime. Just crazy. So the drone, that's, that's a new tool I've started using in the last probably two years um, for documenting this road. Oh no, not that far away. Um, it's been, it's been really neat because there are so many things that you can see from up there that you can't see from on the ground level. I've spotted a couple different landslides starting. I've spotted all kinds of foundations. It's been really a real helpful tool for me. And it's also kind of helping in the idea of when a piece gets wiped out, we can rebuild it based off of actual footage. Come on, buddy. Oof. Look at that light. running out of daylight here, but this is something neat that I think anybody who comes up here should know about. There's only a few spots where the original curbing is still intact. A lot of it got taken out when the road was widened in the 20s, and this is one of them. This is a nice, long stretch. Now, the significance of the curbing on the Old Ridge route, it wasn't just for water runoff. It was a safety feature. There's a couple spots where there were wooden guardrails, but this was the real... <laughs> the real guardrail. Um, a lot of the times you'll find wear on them, like right here. And that was because a lot of the trucks at the point, at that point in time in the 1910s and 1920s didn't have the best brakes and they would rub their tires up against the curb going downhill and that would help slow them down. So there's all kinds of goodies up here. If you look close enough, if you know what you're looking for, this is definitely one of them. And while we're here, if we draw our attention over here on this side, you can see we're at the 1915 Old Ridge route. Then you have the 1970 I-5. And right on the other side of that is, I don't know how well you can actually see it. Um, right on the other side of that is the 1933 Ridge route alternate. That was the replacement for this road. Look at that nice stretch of curbing. And while a lot of the places on the road are still concrete, this was the wearing surface. Now, the road surfaces on the Old Ridge Route were 
largely experimental. They were still trying to figure out what does and doesn't work. So as you look at this road, you'll see all different sizes of aggregate. You'll see different, different consistencies and textures. You'll see variations in the um, concrete as well. All right. This is the last spot I came up here to check on today. Um, I did not plan very well <laughs> to have enough daylight to go all the way through and film all of it. But this is another problem area slide that's starting. We are on Serpentine Drive right now, which is the zigzags that leads up to Swedes Cut, which is right behind the hillside that Powerline Tower is on. So as you can see, this one's been sandbagged off already. This is our temporary measure to keep the road from sliding off the face of the earth, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know. What I would eventually like to do, as just like that curb that I showed you guys a little further back, I would like to build curbs here and then build reinforced drainage chutes so it no longer wears at the surface. But to give you all an idea of what we're dealing with here, that's pretty far in there. Then you can see the rebar that holds the road together, spaced 18 inches apart all the way through. It's kind of a nasty little slide, and it worries me that it's going further underneath the road surface because I don't know how well you can tell level is here, but it's sloping down. And from the marks over here, water has been coming off this hillside and washing down right here. Side note, um, the, uh, this guy over here that I was showing you, this pipeline predates the road, which is quite crazy when you think about it. Pipeline was 1913. First one, and it's cut. We went underneath there, it's cut. But there's still two active ones on there. And don't ask me how they got the pipelines and all the gear for the power lines up here. I cannot imagine. I do know the guy who called the placement on the pipeline, R.E. Maynard, was known as the horseback engineer. And he would ride his horse out and point his finger and say, start digging, let's go. And I think that's a pretty cool story, you know? I feel like stuff doesn't quite happen like that anymore. And on some notes, it's a good thing that doesn't happen, but... Landing. It's also pretty neat. And when we look down there at all the cars going by and there are so many people who just pass this road and have no idea it's here. It, you know, anybody who's come up here feels like it should be a secret, you know. It's, it's something lost and something unknown and yet here it stands. And just before we go, before we head out here, I just want to you know, put it on record. This road is closed to motorized vehicles. That's not, that's not a me rule. That's a Angeles Forest rule. So for anybody who wants to drive the road, it's not day to day open. Now we do events with the Ridge Route Preservation Organization where we have work days and we do a drive of the whole road on the work days. So if you want to come up and volunteer, you're welcome to join us. And then we'll take a little drive down the road and any questions anybody has, we honestly, we love answering <laughs> all of the questions and we talk about this road all day long if we could. Um, and then for gold members of the Ridge Route Preservation Organization, which is $70 a year for the membership, uh, we open up road surveys. So just like tonight where I came up here and I drove the road and I was looking at different projects and keeping track of the changes of the road we invite our members to come be a part of that because we want 
we want people to be involved in this road. We don't want it to be some obscene thing that nobody nobody sees. They just get a text update every once in a while. I, I want people to be up here just as much as us. If anybody is interested in joining our work days, we have two coming up here, October 19th and November 16th. We will be meeting in Castaic at the parking lot of the old Burger King on Castaic Road. Go to ridgeroot.org for more information on that. You go to our events tab and it has everything you need to know. If not, you can always send me a message at the Ridgeroot Facebook page or um, scrosman at ridgeroot.org, S-C-R-O-A-S-M-U-N at ridgeroot.org.